Welcome to Baby Boomer Tales. You can find our webpage at babyboomertales.com. Once you've arrived, you'll find podcast links to your favorite podcast providers where you can listen to Baby Boomer Tales or any podcast you wish. Our Boomers General Store where you can purchase all things Baby Boomers. Now featuring our new Baby Boomer Tales ball cap in an array of colors. You can also find our Twitter page, our Facebook page, a link where you can purchase our book, our Patreon page, and a whole bunch of pictures of that country I speak so much about up in the north central Colorado Rocky Mountains. And northeastern Kansas, the beautiful country where I live today. Thank you for riding along today. I always appreciate you coming along, spending a few minutes with me. I hope you share these podcasts with a friend. I would really appreciate it if you would. Always appreciate it. I need to set some records straight here. My last podcast episode I kind of made fun of the U.S. Post Office, and I know everything's changed, and the way we receive mail has definitely changed. But the fine folks that work at the Post Office are on the whole very, very wonderful. I have some very, very dear friends that either still work there or have retired from the U.S. Postal Service. So I just want to set that straight. When I poke fun, I'm not poking fun of the folks that work there, especially my friends. When I was a kid, I spent most of my money that I made working for my dad or mowing yards on baseball cards. I'd buy those cards. It was a nickel a pack, and he probably got six or seven cards in the pack, plus this little flat piece of gum. It was bubble gum. It was about three quarters as long as a baseball card and maybe a fifth as wide as the card. So it was a good little piece of gum put in your mouth and it's just stale and hard as could be. But after a while of chewing it, if you didn't break a tooth, it softened up and you'd have some bubble gum to go on there. I'd like to put three or four pieces all at one time in my mouth. I really felt like those baseball players that I just bought their cards, you know, Mickey Mantle, Bill Mazeroski, Frank Howard, Willie Mays, Sandy Koufax, those guys. A bunch of them used to always have a big wad of chew in their mouth, and I always, always thought that that was that bubble gum that I just got with my baseball cards. Same stuff. I guess I was too young and naive to realize that they're chewing tobacco, spitting everywhere, making a mess. Baseball did do away with that later on. But not when I was a kid. Those guys had that big old wad in their right cheek or left cheek, stand there at bat, step out of the batter's box and spit. So I always walked around with all this wad of bubble gum in my mouth, big old wad of chew. I really thought I was going to be a baseball player when I grew up. I really did. There's no doubt in my mind. I loved playing baseball. I lived and breathed baseball. I had thousands of baseball cards. Literally thousands of them. Shoebox after shoebox after shoebox full of baseball cards. Later on, some of that paid for itself. I sold about a dozen of them one time for about $1,200. That was pretty good. Today we're talking about gum. Not only that old stale gum that came in my package of baseball cards, but I'm talking gum, like chiclets gum. My grandpa used to give me a couple little pieces of chiclets and they looked like candy, little kind of, not quite flat, but they were kind of square pieces, candy coated. You put them in your mouth and chew on them and that candy kind of dissolve, you know, and then you had gum. Those are pretty good. He also had this gum called Beeman's. It was in a white package, and I liked that Beeman's. He also had, though, some gum called Clove, and it was kind of in a peach color, for lack of a better hue of, of a color there. Gum and 
If you're familiar with clothes, I remember my grandma used to stick clothes in the ham that you'd get on Easter dinner. You know, they'd stick those cloves in there. Now we put honey and stuff on our hams, but not back then. They put those cloves in there and permeate into the meat. It was quite the spice. I hated those things, though. But that clove gum, it was kind of interesting, and I would chew it. I mean, I like to chew gum. If I wasn't chewing that bubble gum from my baseball cards, I'd, I'd chew any gum you could give me or I could get my hands on. Some of my favorite gum was Juicy Fruit. You know, it was introduced to the public in 1893 by Wrigley Gum Company, same people that Wrigley Field in Chicago is named after. They also had spearmint and double mint gum. I loved bubble gum. I really did. I remember getting that bazooka gum and opening up the package. You know, it was kind of squarish, you know, also a rectangle or something. Pop it into my mouth and read the little comic strip that came in the package of gum with old Bazooka Joe. Also, they had double bubble bubble gum. Those people chewing that gum. Blowing those bubbles. I never could blow a real good bubble. I'd blow a little bubble. But I knew some people that could blow a great big bubble almost as big as their head. It was amazing. All you want to do is stick your finger in it, pop it, so it pop all over their face. You'd laugh, run away. Especially if it was girls. She'd kick you in the shins for popping that bubble. How about those machines? You go into a store and there'd be machines there as you walked in. And one machine would have peanuts. And another machine would have Boston baked beans. Remember those? Candy coated peanuts, all kind of brown and had bumps all over them. And then there was a machine with jawbreakers. I was never real good at jawbreakers because I want to chew on the sucker. Bust your teeth doing that. And then there was a Machine with bubble gum. Big round pieces of bubble gum, all candy coated. Looked like a jawbreaker. Looked just like the jawbreaker, only it was gum. You get that in your mouth, it'd take a minute to get it busted down. That candy eventually dissolve as you're chewing. You have a big old piece of bubble gum. Maybe you could do two of them. Yeah, I like those machines. Mom, can I have a nickel? You know who liked me? Chewing gum the very most was my dentist. I spent one miserable summer having to go to the dentist every week, filling my teeth as I was chewing that candy-coated, candy-infused gum. How about blackjack gum? Remember that stuff? I guess it was licorice flavor. From what I could read about it, they said it was licorice flavor. If I remember right, black licorice tastes a little different than blackjack gum, but I liked both of them. I did like blackjack gum. Had a little picture of a guy in a sailor hat or some kind of little hat, maybe winking at you. I can't remember. I should have looked up a picture of that. You can buy stuff like that at places where they sell nostalgic candy and pop and that stuff. But I could always counteract all those bubble gums and blackjack gum and the gum you get out of the machine for a nickel, all that, by chewing dentine. By golly, I wouldn't even have to brush my teeth if I chew some dentine. Now, those pieces of dentine were real little. It'd take three or four of them just to get a good chew going. I like dentine. I think it was cinnamon flavored, and I like cinnamon. My mom would make me cinnamon toast. You know, piece of toast, and she'd butter it down, and the butter melt into it, and then she sprinkled cinnamon and sugar on it, and it all melt into that hot toast. Oh, that was good stuff. Well, I think dentine tasted kind of like that cinnamon. Later on, they came out with some specialty gums like Trident. That was sugarless gum, I believe. You only could chew that about a minute and you'd run out of the flavor. I'd spit it right back out as soon as the flavor was out. Fruit Stripe. I thought that was kind of gimmicky and it wasn't like juicy fruit to me at all. But I think it was pretty popular gum. How about Asper Gum? When I became a teenager, I'd chew that Asper Gum, kind of like it was candy. 
I don't know if it was good for me or not. It's supposed to have aspirin in it. Make you feel better if you had a headache or something. There are so many types of gum, but my favorite of all time was definitely that stale old gum I bought in the baseball card package. You know that gum? I'm not a fan of gum anymore. I don't chew gum. My teeth aren't bad or anything. I just don't like the chew and chew and chew and try and blow a bubble. You can find gum everywhere, though. Go to a restaurant. It's under the table where you're sitting trying to eat your meal. Someone had stuck it under there when their hamburger came. They would just stick their gum right under that table or throw the gum out and you're walking along on the street and you step in gum. What a mess. That stay with you for a very long time in your shoes. No matter how much you try to clean it off, it was there. People chewing with their mouth open, just working that gum. People blowing those bubbles, and they pop real loud. Little bitty bubbles really popped the loudest. They really did. When I was in seventh grade, the high school basketball team was very, very good. And they'd pack out that gym every home game. There were so many people coming to the basketball games, they had to put bleachers up on the stage. The stage was at one end of the gymnasium. And they'd raise the backboards, you know, if there was a play or something on the stage. Well, they put these bleachers on the stage to accommodate more fans that came and wanted to watch the Mighty Panthers, who happened to win state that year when I was in seventh grade. Won the whole thing. Class B, Colorado, high school, boys basketball. And so one game we were playing one of our rivals, and I was sitting there up on the bleachers on the stage, and the game was getting exciting, and this little kid that's sitting behind me, all of a sudden, I felt something on my head. I turned around, and he had taken his gum and just smeared it in my hair. Now, this little kid, he was pretty little. He just smiled at me like, what you gonna do about it? And I became mortified that that kid would put that gum in my hair. I think he was sitting with his dad or something, and dad was probably oblivious to what was happening because he was watching the basketball game, of course. And I didn't smack the kid or anything. It's probably a good thing he grew up to be a Olympic-caliber skier. Very nice guy. But he was probably about a four-year-old little... <laughs> kid back when he lathered my hair with his chewing gum. I had to go home right after the game, told my mom what happened, and I think she took some oil or something and got most of it out, then took some scissors and cut the rest out. I couldn't believe it. By the time I was home, it was pretty hard, you know, and it was stuck to me. You ever had gum in your hair? It's one of those things I'll never forget. I'll never forget Danny either. What a wonderful guy he was. He sure gave me a memory I'll never forget. I remember him for two main reasons. That night with the gum and the basketball. And another time clear up, clear up high in the mountains. Up in the middle of nowhere. And here the guy comes. Just lickety split, walked right by me, said hi, how you doing? Great day for a walk. And he just kept trucking. He is in shape like nobody's business. That guy could really ski. He is quite an athlete and a wonderful individual. That's my story of gum. I'm sure there's a lot of different kinds of gum anymore that wasn't even on my radar. I know they still sell juicy fruit. I don't know if they put it in baseball cards anymore or not. I need to go buy a package of baseball cards. If I can find that, I don't even know if they sell them in packages like that anymore. Maybe I'll get some blackjack while I'm at it. Put it over my two front teeth. Make it look like what I probably really am at heart. And that is a hillbilly. Always be kind. There's really no other way. I'll be back next Wednesday. Peace out.